You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, I'd like to call the po Board of Police Commissioners to order. This is November 12th, 5.30. And first on the order is approval of the minutes for the October meeting. So moved. Second. Second. All Aye. in favor? Aye. 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 Report of the Chief. Deputy Chief. Okay. Um, <laughs> So this is the month of October, uh, we had an increase in the uh, number of arrests made from September from 39 to 48. Um, however, there was a decrease in part one crimes from 29 in September to 23 in October. Um, in terms of cases of significance, we had a, uh, an assault on North Ivy Street. Uh, officers responded. They uh, found a male bleeding alongside the roadway. Um, he had suffered serious bodily injuries as he was struck with uh, a sharp instrument. Determined that the male victim had gotten into an altercation with his girlfriend's brother, um, the suspect, while at the, uh, their residence where they reside together. Uh, the suspect was taken into custody. Um, he had uh, used a broomstick to assault the male, creating laceration. There was a charge of assault in the second degree, a threatening and disorderly conduct. Um, we had a... Uh, motor vehicle theft um, that was on Leeds Island Road. Um, owner reported she had last seen her vehicle the uh, evening before. She had once been um, the uh, victim of a motor vehicle theft and at that time keys were left in the vehicle. Um, so this was the second time she had a vehicle stolen from her. What kind um, of car was it? I don't know the make on the vehicle. However, it was recovered in Waterbury following a collision with a telephone pole. No arrests were made, but the uh, driver fled the scene of the crash um, up in Waterbury. So, you know, it's just another good reminder to lock your vehicles and not leave anything of value inside them and not leave the keys to them in the vehicles. Um, additionally, we had a uh, warrant arrest for a subject of a burglary and larceny charges. Um, that was stemming from a burglary to a local restaurant this past April. Suspect had kicked in the back door during overnight hours. Two safes were located and stolen from an office inside the restaurant, which contained approximately $5,000. Detective Barrow investigation led to a suspect who confessed to the crime. Uh, 12 thefts from motor vehicles during the month of October. One was uh, a purse containing a uh, cell phone during daytime hours parked in the lot of a commercial business. Um, a second was the theft of medical marijuana from a vehicle uh, while the vehicle was being serviced. Uh, ten other incidents occurred during overnight hours. <clears throat> so, uh, the uh, total number of quality of life crimes decreased uh, 11 percent this month from 91 in September to 81 in October. Motor vehicle accidents they decreased 27 percent from 52 in September to 38 in October. Uh, we had a 126 motor vehicle infractions issued during the month of October and our traffic enforcement initiatives our concentration areas were uh, Shore Drive and Cherry Hill Road. Um, over the past month. <clears throat> uh, so the forfeiture report that remained the same. Um, the, uh, we do have one officer out injured currently, so I can give uh, status, further status and details during executive session on that, yeah. reference the injury. Um, and we have two letters that we received from the public regarding um, thanking some officers, which are, one was written to Officer Vera, 
um, what was written to the chief in reference to Officer Vera, who this person witnessed a random act of kindness by her while at Dunkin' Donuts. Um, Officer Vera noticed that a high school student didn't have enough money to purchase her breakfast. It was really nice. Sir. Yeah, so she purchased her breakfast for the student. Um, the person was very impressed, compelled to write the letter. They felt as though, uh, you know, seeing this and realizing that being an officer is more than just putting bad guys away and writing tickets. Um, they saw Officer Vera's kindness, empathy, and integrity, and they were thankful that they witnessed such a wonderful thing. Yep. So that was a very nice letter. And we received a second regarding Officer Abley, Chris Manor, and Mike O'Connor, who helped a person, um, and they felt as though these officers went out of their way to help this person in dealing with uh, his typical teenage son. So they were very informative and helpful during um, an incident that they helped investigate. So, and uh, the only other thing we have is, uh, so there's three recruits at the academy. Um, all reports are that they're doing well. They're expected to graduate in January. Uh, the chief and I have reviewed the budget. We're on track financially with where we should be for this time of year. Um, we also received a letter from POST. That's the Police Officer Standards and Training Council that we're in compliance with Public Act 18-161. So this public act requires all police departments in the state to adopt and maintain 16 minimum standards and practices developed by POST Council. So we've been in compliance um, with these standards. We received uh, a letter from a com compliance officer who did our inspection in 2019 that we're in compliance and we meet or meet or exceed these standards. That's great. Right. So, and a lot of that was it was a very easy transition for us, based on our past history with Kalia. A lot of our policies were up to date um, where they should be. A few of them we had to look at, make some adjustments to to get them up uh, into compliance. But now that you know we're in compliance with post standards and we have our eyes maybe considering again trying to get back to Kalia accreditation so that's a, a future goal I, I do have one request for you guys if, if that's all right and that is usually in the first week or two of December we have an initial budget meeting and I'm wondering if if we could schedule that so that you know we get on track with that okay in reference to Kalia no, no, it's no, the everything. general budget okay. meeting. It's just with the budget committee, you know, oh, which Rick right. heads up. Right. Okay. So you, you started talking about being on track with the budget. That's great. Uh, but I want to make sure that we sort of with the changing of the guard and all that, that we... we, we we're on the same pace. Yeah, we're on okay. the same pace. You know, you know what I mean? Gotcha. And, and that's all. It happens fast too, you know. You know how it happens. Right. right. Yep. Just, just to build on the Kalia, there is a move now to to go for re recertification. Um, it's yeah, something that has definitely been, um, you know, on the chief's horizon and something that we'd like to get back to. We had a Kalia, a Kalia right. accreditation here in the past. Pretty um, expensive. So isn't it? it can be very expensive. Um, we're not far from it, so right. that may help with the cost because we've had some money's invested in years past to get us to accreditation so um, you know I, I just I guess where I'm thinking is with the two new captains the, t the new deputy the new chief since then it's a very exhaustive exercise I hope that a lot of the money that we spent is still in yeah. practice so we right. won't have to spend it again but yeah and I think it'd be a very easy transition for us that, because of the work that's been that's done in the past my thinking too but I th think everybody would benefit from that so I'm glad to see that you're looking at it again so mm -hmm. all right okay. we have to go into executive session correct yes okay I'd like to make a motion at this point that we go into executive session and that we invite our deputy chief uh, to come along second all in favor aye, aye. Executive session, no votes were taken, and we move along to traffic. Okay. First item is a request for stop sign or other appropriate actions uh, near or at the intersection of Brockett Point Lane and Brockett's Point Road. Uh, 
this was carried over from the last session. Uh, what the recommendation of the committee is uh, that we adhere to the town engineer's recommendation and a second visit where we went out, looked at the sight line, and unfortunately, uh, because they're lovely trees, uh, to go with the recommendation of the town engineer that the trees be removed. I have a, a sight line plan that clearly shows them on town property. So if there would be a motion. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion uh, that uh, town engineering uh, would tag the trees that need to come down and notify the homeowner of that impending action. Can I have a second? Second. 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 And, and I'm assuming that after their tag, they would let Public Works know. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a taking your property without due process. Well, oh, I don't want to get technical. Uh, it, but, it's but, on town property. It is on town property. Okay. The guy. But the tree belongs to. It's, it's on town property. <laughs> Everything's on property. I know. It's on town property. It's uh, probably an error at the time. Okay, moving along. <sighs> Your car is on all town those, property. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Reluctantly. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful trees. All right. Second item is request for an hallway stop sign on Cherry Hill Road at the Greenfield intersection. Uh, the department did an analysis. There was maybe some 600 uh, cars going through there, something in that range, and uh, that's about 10% of what the recommended number is before you put a uh, uh, stop sign, a mid-block stop sign in. Uh, so the recommendation of the committee for that is no action. Additionally, the same requester uh, wanted stop signs on Cherry Hill Road at the intersection of Todd and Cherry. Uh, the traffic there is even less, so again, recommendation no of the committee is no action. Is it Todd or Todd's? Todd. Todd's. Todd. 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 Todd's. I, I think it's T-O-D-D-S. Oh, it's Todd's. 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 Yeah, yeah. Because we've been saying Todd. Okay. Um, number three is request for Department of Transportation uh, DOC action to improve safety, preventing vehicles from hitting the bridge where the Monoway Street uh, goes under the Amtrak Railroad Bridge. Um, there's no action necessary here because the chief had already taken action on this and had contacted uh, DOT. DOT. It's, it's a, their road, uh, their signs, so we'll right. see if what, if anything happens. Okay, Item four right. is a request of DOT again to discontinue allowing right turns at the Route 39, Route 1 intersection, North Bramford coming into East Main Street. Um, what the recommendation of the committee is, is that the chief requests DOT to look at this intersection uh, with the request to no longer allow right turns after stop for traffic exiting 139 and turning southwest. The request is also to include uh, accident data as appropriate. So that would be the action. If there could be a motion in that, is there a motion? To um, well, do we need a motion to, uh, to I think to actually, refer it to DOT, okay. because DOT really wants, as a result of okay, the third so, one, LT, LATA, local so, traffic. So uh, I'd like to make a motion that the chief contacts uh, DOT um, to discuss allowing, discontinue allowing right turns uh, uh, on the Route 139, Route 1 intersection, um, and that the uh, accident uh, information go along with that. Well, making right turns or? So a right turn on red. Right turn on red. So that's going to be, we're recommending that that is disallowed. Well, you're on Route 1 and 139, aren't yeah. you? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Now, getting out of your business establishment mm -hmm. over to Featherbed Lane, okay. as Peter has brought up, is extremely dangerous. Through no fault of yours, obviously. Extremely. More as, a, as a matter of fact, it's a good thing you have the other outlet. Right. Because that's where uh, what I have to take to, to get. To go left. To, I go left to Featherbed. Windmill Hill. Yep. Go, which is a lot longer. While you go around, yes. Yeah. yeah. A lot longer. 
but it's extremely because you don't see those cars coming out. Yeah, it's very dangerous. Yeah, you get out the feather that lane. And it's morning, rush hour, both rush hours, morning and yeah. afternoon. All right, so we had a unanimous vote yeah. to, yes. on the part of LADA with the uh, And it's for the protection of your patrons, too, because Absolutely. when you leave uh, from a side outlet, you're liable. In other words, and someone who pulled out has caused an accident or an accident occurred, that person's liable. Right. The burden's on them. Yeah. Yep. yep. Not the burden, it's on them. Okay, number five. A request for a right turn only sign at the intersection of Chestnut Street with North Main Street uh, for northbound traffic on Chestnut. Uh, this again involves DOT, so I would appreciate okay, a motion. I'd like to uh, make a motion uh, that we contact uh, DOT um, specifically to look into what um, remedies might be used at the intersection of Chestnut Street and North. Main Street. Can I have a second? Second. On there. Aye. Aye. And the final one, number six, the request for a hidden driveway sign or something akin to that on South Monowee Street in the vicinity of 112 South Monowee Street. We, we took a look at this. It is on a curve. Uh, the sight lines are not good. However, there are so many signs in that area and candidly, people don't really pay attention to those signs. So if, you, if it's a stop sign, I pay attention. Oh, you to pay it. attention to a stop sign, right. but the warning signs yeah. they no. just don't. And uh, you're not supposed to back out onto a state highway anyway, which that is. And so the recommendation is no action. No action. action. Yeah. And that concludes my report. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Um, all right. Report of the chair. Other than there's no meeting next month unless budget. You know, has no, no, something, no, 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 no. It's, but there's no formal yeah. commission meeting. And the next one we have is the second Monday in January, which is the 13th, I believe. So that's January 13th will be the next time we all see each other, unless, of course, budget happens. So. Merry, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, so that concludes. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.